Welcome to Blues Blogs, year two. Um, I know the first year was kind of boring, and this year might be. I don't know. I'm not that interesting of a guy. Uh, usually I'm going to have a wingman, though, so we'll see how that goes. But for tonight, I'm just uh, flying solo, and uh, that's good because I've got a list. Actually, I should have like an index on this thing with all the things I want to talk about today. Let's get started. But first, I want to talk about the uh, positives of the season so far and uh, the way the Blues started off. In Sweden was very nice against Detroit. Um, two wins out of there. I did not expect two wins out of that. Very good way to start the season. Um, Petrangelo has looked solid in the games that he started. Um, I know that his plus minus is pretty much terrible, but um, I'm going to kind of look past that and say that he's really improving and the transition game is really helping the Blues, at least as the offense can get going. But the transition game is there. He's definitely making the plays, and uh, this is what we wanted to see from our fourth overall pick, and I'm glad that he's here. I don't think sending him to juniors is an option, and I'm pretty sure it's already been ruled out. So that's kind of a moot point. Another thing that's impressed me since the beginning of the year and as the season's gone on is Daryl Sador. Daryl Sador, I really didn't have a lot of uh, high hopes for him here. I thought that he would totally just be this old guy who would play 7th D-man occasionally, but he's really stepped it up, and I'm glad. And I think part of that might be that he's paired with Johnson. But just the fact that he is um, here in the lineup and making a difference, and he's not he's not a detriment to the play, which I thought he would be, but just the fact that he's actually able to make the play is just, I didn't believe that would happen. So solid defensively, good pickup, glad for it. Um, Conklin, also another good pickup um, in the fact that we needed a backup, and I think Mason plays better now that he's got Conklin on his side. I, there was an article on NHL's website about it, how they feel like they're a team now or something. But so much of it is that um, I I was worried that if we got Conklin, I know a lot of people were worried about this, that if we got Conklin or if we got a backup that would actually be able to play, that Mason might feel threatened and his game might suffer, kind of like it did in Nashville. And the defense in general has been solid. And another good addition to the defense is uh, Eric Brewer. He's back early. I really didn't give him before January to come back. I th um, so the fact that he's back in the lineup, I know some Blues fans... Totally have written him off as a terrible defenseman. I don't think so, and I'm glad to have him back in the lineup. The Blues are the eighth best in the league um, in goals against average with a 2.53. I'm looking at it. I just did not. I did not just know that. It's sitting there. On a note. That's about all we can talk about that was good. Uh, let's talk about the bad. Okay, we all know boys in Korea just haven't really shown up. And the uh, leader in points on this team is uh, Keith Kachuk with nine, and here Eric Johnson tied him with nine. And it's pretty bad. I've, I've got a chart of a lot of stuff here that I want to talk about. One thing I've noticed is that the we're struggling on the offensive department, and um, we're not putting out our forwards, like our scoring forwards that you'd think we would put out there. For example, McDonald, Korea, Oshie, those guys. I don't. This all started with the Atlanta. Well, it started at the uh, game before the Atlanta game, but then the Atlanta game too. And I made some comment to uh, my friend while I was watching the game. I said something like, "I die a little every time inside." I sit in Clement on in overtime, and so I got to kind of thinking about that. Why is he there? Is he really going to contribute in overtime? Um, and so I started breaking down a lot of numbers, and the numbers I started looking at was uh, time on ice, points, production, and even strength time on ice per game. I looked at a lot more numbers, but these are the four relevant ones that I want to talk about. And production is a really simple formula in hockey. The uh, way it works is that you take the uh, total time on ice and you divide it by points, and then that, that comes out to be your production. So, for example, Eric Johnson has a production of 36 minutes and 13 seconds-ish. I'm kind of rusty on math, but for the most part, that's right. So, that's a decent number for a defenseman, obviously, and he kind of leads our team in points, or at least he's tied with Walt. Speaking of which, Walt leads our team with 23 minutes and 20 seconds time production. The smaller the number, the better it is. It's kind of like a golf score. What it basically means is that it takes this long for this player to register a point. So, when... Walt has 23 minutes, that means it takes him 23 minutes before he gets a point. Okay, cool. So the problem comes when that uh, you can use production as a measure of basically how offensive a player is. If a player has a low production number, that means he's going to score more often. So the problem is, is that we aren't scoring, and yet we're putting guys out on the um, even strength time, like Jay McClement. 
and that that's what I was thinking about in overtime is that I, I really like Jay McClellan. I mean, I'm not I'm not trying to rag on McClellan himself. I just don't think he's being utilized in the right role. And of course, in order to do that, you have to look at the coaching. And I'll get there in a second. But I want to just keep looking at these numbers for a second. So we've got the uh, highest production on the team is Kachuk, then Perron. It looks like I'm just kind of looking at these numbers roughly. There's all I've got like the whole team in front of me. But yeah, Kachuk, Perron are both under 30 minutes for production, which is good. Um, guys who are over production, uh, Weaver has zero. Weaver has not reg registered a point. Which, by the way, in the new NHL, you can't have a defenseman like that. You can't have a defenseman that cannot contribute in the forward play. So that's a problem. And this is sort of a story with a lot of the Blues defensemen, um, a lot of the Blues players in general. you got Brad Winchester, David Backus. They're both in the hundreds for uh, production. When you look at this, and here is my uh, chart. I'm just going to put it up here. If you want to read it, you can pause the screen. So, right. I hope that was able to be paused and all that. So the problem is, is that even strength time on ice per game which doesn't factor in the penalty kill or the power play, which I think is a good indicator of just how often your coach is putting you out there in a normal situation. Problem is, is that I started looking at it, and the forward who leads our team in even strength time on ice, you might have seen it if you uh, checked out that list, is Jay McClement with 13 minutes and 49 seconds roughly each game. I don't get that. I don't, I don't get it at all. I don't get why we're... I mean, we're struggling to score, and so our solution is to put out our shutdown forward. And I know, I understand Andy Murray's uh, tactics of put a shutdown line out there, pu um, put a cap on the uh, other team's scoring line so that we will stay close in the game. The problem is, is that that philosophy works great. Re it works really good for bad teams, teams that don't have a lot of offensive firepower. Teams like the Blues have been for the last two years, three years, whatever. So that works really well. But when you have a team that can actually produce... You got McDonald, Oshie, boys. Maybe boys, not so much. And, um, you know, you got these guys. And I'm looking at this list, and you've got uh, Berglund in the, at 10 minutes and 49 seconds. You've got Oshie at 11 minutes and 39 seconds. And yet you've got Crombean at 12.06. I don't get that. I don't get why Crombean is seeing more time than O'Shea and Bergman. I don't understand why McClement is seeing more time on the even strength than McDonald or Perron or anybody. I, I don't understand that. And I really think this is a key indication of why we're losing our games. The problem is, is that when you do that, you keep the game really low scoring, which is what we've seen. We've seen low scoring affairs. And you don't give your forwards, your scoring forwards, a chance to go out there and actually score because you've got these shutdown guys out there. And so that's what we're seeing is that we're seeing a lot of close games that we end up losing by one goal because our offense just can't come in in the clutch because our offense is made up of McClement and Crombie. 